सर इज एवरीथिंग ओके द क्वेश्चन थ्री पॉइंट वन वन इज गिवन एज वट डू यू मीन बाय आइसो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्पीशीज द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी हैव वट डू यू मीन बाय आइसो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्पीशीज all right now the first of all the point is what actually isoelectronic wants to convey to us isoelectronic ka matlab kya hai as i have already told you isoelectronic is made up of two different words that is iso and electro am i clear so if i would like to say what is iso that means same electronic means simply electro so the species or the atoms or the elements which have same number of electrons is known to be isoelectronic species okay for example uh, i'm describing a simple question name the species that will be isoelectronic with each of the following atom or ions the first one is given f negative okay so humne abhi tak sirf definition ke bare mein pata chala hai ki what is isoelectronic species now we have to name the uh, atom or ion which is isoelectronic with this particular f negative so first of all i would like to say that just write the uh, we can say atomic number of fluorine or in the the fluorine has total 9 electrons and one negative charge has described that it has total 10 electrons okay fluorine ka atomic number is 9 and you have studied in your first chapter and even in 10th class that the atomic number means that particular atom or that particular ion has exactly same number of electrons okay so if i'm talking about fluorine fluorine has atomic number equals to 9 and it has one negative charge that means it has one extra electron 10 electrons f negative has 10 electrons similarly neon it also has 10 electrons because its atomic number is 10 or we can say o3 negative because oxygen has 7 it would gain 3 electrons to become 10 okay so these are simply isoelectronic species now let's move with our next question question number 12 consider the following species the question number 3.12 tells us we have n3 negative o2 negative f negative n positive mg 2 positive aluminum 3 positive so he has asked us what's common in them okay simply bachche if you have a look on this topic f negative seems to be very simple it has 10 electrons we have just shown sodium has z equals to 11 1 positive means it has 10 electrons magnesium has z equals to 12 minus 2 that is 10 13 minus 3 that is equals to 10 oxygen 8 plus 2 equals to 10 and 3 negative 7 plus 3 equals to 10 okay that means they are isoelectronic species so this question was purely based on isoelectronic species now next question is arrange them in the order of increasing ionic radii the next question is we have to arrange them in the order of increasing ionic radii okay bachche let me uh, tell you one thing whenever we have done the concept of ionic radii or atomic radii we have uh, seen that the radii of anion is greater than neutral and it is greater than radii of cation and why is it so that is our next question but you have to remember this you do not even need to remember we will see in our next question we have studied that rule ki anion ki radii hamesha greater hoti hai the neutral than cation moreover if we have a number of anions then we would see that which particular anion has maximum charge 
that means on the basis of charge we can easily define their uh, ionic radii so simply n3 negative it has maximum charge so it must have maximum ionic radii then o2 negative then f negative then na positive magnesium 2 positive and aluminum 3 positive because in the positive the maximum charge it would be the smallest it would be. okay and why is it so that's our next question so this is it we have just done with the help of isoelectronic species as well as the radii of anion and cation okay now the next question is why cations are smaller and anion are larger in their parent nuclei so it's the same question we have done all right so now we have cations and anions and we are asked these are the smaller and these are the greater okay let's have a simple look bachche if i'm talking about my n this is something which is very neutral okay if we're talking about n positive and same as it is n negative now what would be the variation in it if i'm talking about my cation that is n positive it means suppose this is my nucleus and there are electrons surrounding to each other okay now the point is we have removed one electron we have excluded one electron so jab hum ek electron ko exclude kar rahe hain what's happening the number of negative charge would be lesser as compared to positive charge dobara suniye suppose we have 11 electrons first of all and 11 protons now we have removed one electron that means 10 electrons and 11 protons that means the positive charge is higher than the negative charge we have easily seen that as the positive charge is higher than the negative charge it means the force of attraction of nucleus to the electron would be maximum positive charge is higher than the negative charge the force of attraction says us that opposite charges attract to each other when it has maximum positive charge it would easily attract the negative to itself and due to attraction our size would be decreased due to attraction they would come closer to each other pehle wo thoda separate thi due to attraction they would come closer to each other due to closer attraction the size would be smaller am i clear so simply we can say in the case of cations due to increase of nuclear charge due to increment of positive charge the size would be small clear same as it is if i'm talking about anion it's just opposite it has more number of electrons so nuclear charge would be less nuclear charge would be less force of attraction would be small and definitely size would be higher one more thing bachche in the case of anion suppose this was the point this is my nucleus these are electrons moving now suppose we have to provide them and one extra electron in the particular case when i am providing the extra electron it has to go into the new shell maan lijiye yahan pe sirf mere paas do electrons the mujhe third electron dena pad raha hai iske paas ability nahi hai aur electron ko gain karne ki to kya hoga usko nayi shell mein jump karna padega so number of shell would be increased definitely the radii would be increased pehle the right radii was only this now it has extended due to formation of new shell clear so in this way we can say simply due to nuclear charge the size can be varied okay nuclear charge means we have explained clear so this was my next question let's move to our next question 3.14 what is the significance of terms isolated gaseous atom and ground state all right let's go But if there is still any kind of doubt in this particular topic, please let me know when we will cover our complete questions.
okay so the next question is we have to define isolated gaseous atom and the ground state isolated gaseous atom and ground state we noted as gs um while defining the ionization enthalpy and electron gain enthalpy ionization enthalpy and electron gain enthalpy okay but if this question is nothing this is just the definition of ionization enthalpy and electron gain enthalpy what is ionization enthalpy simply ionization enthalpy is the energy required to remove the most loosely bounded electron from the isolated gaseous state i am again repeating energy required to remove most loosely bounded state from ion electron from isolated gaseous atom so ionization enthalpy wants to say to us if my atom is isolated it is in atomic form then how much energy is needed that is known to be ionization time okay this means if i am talking about oxygen 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 and we have to remove one electron from it this is not my ionization enthalpy why because my oxygen atom they has been combined to make a molecule but the definition says we need a isolated gaseous atom that means only in oxygen we have to remove one electron that is known to be ionization enthalpy am i clear so this is just a simply definition which wants to say that's why uh, in periodic table we have seen that we have named the simply atom like oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium and many more am i clear so we have to remove only the electron from isolated atom. okay so this was it this was all i wanted to say about this topic now next one is ground state in electron gain enthalpy when i have defined the electron gain enthalpy what i have said i have said that it is quite opposite from the ionization energy and how is it so ionization energy says we need energy to remove electron from it whereas electron gain enthalpy the name suggests we need energy to gain an electron it was removing an electron it was losing an electron it is gaining an electron now the point here is we have the term ground state how can you relate ground state with electron gain enthalpy this is so simple bachche in second unit you have seen that uh, my atoms they are move sorry my electrons they are moving around the nucleus first we have ground state then is my excited state so ground state here defines that this is present over here but when we have uh, we provide it more energy its electron would simply jump to the excited state that means if i have provided extra energy to the electron which is very close to the nucleus it is in first shell k it would easily jump to second shell n okay or we can say it would jump from n equals to 1 to n equals to 2 so this is known to be ground state when it was moving by its own energy we do not have to provide it extra energy this is known to be ground state that means electron is at rest this is, this has its own energy okay but when we have provided extra energy we have to gain more energy what would happen it would jump to the highest clear so this was all about the topic isolated gaseous state and the ground state in these two terms ionization enthalpy and electron gain okay so let's now uh, move to our next topic that is question number 3.15 that's a good question we have a numerical over here let's see the question 3.15 is a numerical based on mole concept that means this is based on first chapter so but i just want to say that whenever we have completed our third chapter it means uh, 
the book writer wants to say to us we have commended over first two chapters so i'm again repeating if you are studying third chapter you need to revise first two chapters also okay so please be in touch with all the chapters make your solution or uh, make your notes ready as well okay so next question is energy of electron in the ground state is known to be minus 2.18 into 10 raised to power minus 8 joule and we have to require <coughs> the ionization enthalpy of same atom in terms of low joule and also we have to give one kilo joule per mole this was the energy of electron of an atom now we have to calculate energy of the same atom in kilo joule per mole that means we have been provided the atomic Uh, the atomic structure and we have to calculate its energy in the form of mole okay so the first point is first thing it is in the term of joule we have to convert it in kilo joule second point it is in the form of atom and we have to convert it to into mole so we have to calculate it number of moles also okay so there are two concepts uh, of this simple question this is nothing we have to just modify it it's like a unit dimension okay so it's kind of first chapter question but we need to require it because we have added the term ionization enthalpy okay so hame simply kya karna hai joule ko kilo joule mein convert karna hai aur atom ko mole mein convert karna hai but the point here is what is ionization enthalpy ionization enthalpy is something which is known to be remo- uh, energy required to remove electron from most uh, loosely bounded state hai na and the point here is we have studied that ionization enthalpy is always endothermic when we have studied this topic i have told you this is endothermic that means we are providing energy for, for the reaction okay i have also told you that endothermic reaction are always positive but the question is given into the negative so what should we do we have to make it into the positive aur hum positive kaise banayenge with the help of a simple logic the simple logic says to us my atom is in the ground state that means this is in the rest when this is in the rest its energy is equals to zero i am again repeating bachche the question says the atom is present in the ground state that means in the ground state this is at the rest there is no energy over there then we will provide energy to remove from it okay so my energy of electron in ground state is equals to zero and we have to calculate the energy required to remove an electron from the ground state that means ionization energy that would be equals to zero minus energy that we have been provided that means plus 2.18 into 10 raised to power minus 8 joule that's it it's positive our work has been solved hai na now the question here is we have to calculate the ionization enthalpy in kilo joule per mole so it would be converted 2.18 into 10 raised to power minus 8 into we have known that the avogadro number says it has 6.0022 into 10 raised to power 23 moles that means it defines one atom contains this many moles so it would convert into moles and from joule to convert into kilo joule we would divide it by 1000 that would be our answer am i clear bachche very simple question kind of chapter 1 question first we have to convert atom into mole and joule into kilo joule but ionization enthalpy is in positive so we have converted into positive also okay we haven't added any kind of extra in clear so this was very simple question and we have 
solved it. Next, move to our next question. Question number 3.16. <clears throat> All right. The next questions which on this chapter are based on the trends. Yani, we have studied so many trends. Study ke the, whether it was of ionization energy, of atomic radii, electron gain enthalpy, or metallic mole metallic character. We have studied that how down the wood is increased, along the period, what variation is there. These questions are based on these trends. Okay, so let's move with the next question. 